This is the ScholarLink News for 4th January 2021. A Singaporean man who spied on the United States for China was arrested by the Internal Security Department upon his return to Singapore. Dixon Yeo was sentenced to 14 months jail in the US for spying. He had revealed to investigators there that his previous targets included states other than the US. The ISD will interview him to see if he had engaged in activities prejudicial to Singapore's security. The ISD stated that Singapore will not allow its citizens to be used for activities against Singapore's security or national interests. It added that such individuals will be firmly dealt with. Yeo pleaded guilty to obtaining sensitive information from Americans while working for Chinese intelligence officials for four years. Yeo spotted and assessed American citizens and paid them to write reports that he sent to the Chinese government. He set up a fake political consultancy and used social networking sites to find his targets. Think about it. What do you think were the Singaporeans' motive to work for one foreign country to spy for another foreign country? China's drug regulator has approved the country's first coronavirus vaccine for general public use. This is a sign of confidence in the experimental shots the nation will be rolling out within the country and in other countries as well. The National Medical Products Administration has authorized a COVID-19 vaccine developed by state-owned China National Biotech Group, which is a unit of Sinopharm. The vaccine had previously been authorized for emergency use since the middle of last year. With the approval, it will be made commercially available and can be given to the general population. The initial vaccinations will go to parts of the population at higher risk, such as the elderly. China's goal is to inoculate 50 million people by early February, ahead of the annual Chinese New Year holiday. However, China faces challenges in winning the trust of people, as Chinese vaccine developers have been slow to release clinical trial data. This raises questions over transparency, efficacy, and safety. Think about it. If you had a choice, which of the vaccines which are currently commercially available would you wish to take, and why? With the unwanted title of being the country which is worst hit by the coronavirus, the United States had a record of over 3,900 COVID-19 deaths in a 24-hour period. There were almost 190,000 new infections being recorded which brings the U.S. total to over 20 million infections and over 340,000 deaths since the pandemic began. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's leading infectious disease expert, warned that the worst of the pandemic was yet to come. He projects that the U.S. will achieve enough COVID-19 immunity through vaccinations to start to return to normal by autumn of this year. Although almost 3 million people have received vaccinations, that is far short of the 20 million that President Donald Trump had promised for the end of 2020. Furthermore, a second case of the highly transmissible B117 strain of coronavirus had been detected in California. The first case was detected in Colorado. Think about it. What do you think is causing the slow rollout of vaccinations? Is it a problem with production or transportation or something else? Brexit finally became a reality as Britain left Europe's customs union and single market, ending turbulent ties with some of its closest neighbours. It took effect when most of the European mainland ushered in the new year at the stroke of midnight. The issue of Brexit has dominated British politics since the country narrowly voted to leave the European Union in 2016, opening political and social wounds. EU rules will no longer apply to Britain, 
with one consequence being the end of the free movement of more than 500 million people between Britain and the 27 EU states. Britain is the first member state to leave the EU, which was set up to forge unity after World War II. There are concerns that other member states could also leave the EU. Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that Brexit is a new beginning in the country's relationship with the EU as their biggest ally. Think about it. Do you think there are more advantages than disadvantages to Britain for Brexit or vice versa? Why? Mr. Tsong Shan Shan had a career in journalism, mushroom farming and healthcare, but is now a private billionaire who is Asia's richest person. His net worth surged by 70.9 billion US dollars last year to 77.8 billion US dollars, making him the 11th richest person in the world, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. It is one of the fastest accumulations of wealth in history. Mr. Chung is not involved in politics, nor are his business interests entwined with those of other wealthy families, earning him the nickname Lone Wolf. He has a company making vaccines, Beijing Wantai Biological Pharmacy Enterprise, and bottled water maker Nongfu Spring. Both of his companies went public recently and account for much of his wealth. Shares of Nongfu Spring have risen 155% since the company listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, while Wantai's are up by an incredible 2,000%. The latter company is in the midst of developing a COVID-19 vaccine. This brings us to the end of today's edition of the Scholarlink News. Please remember to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our new videos. As always, this is the Scholarlink team wishing you goodbye and have a wonderful rest of the day.